Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Hello Girl DIY. Today I'm going to be doing three Boho inspired Hobby Lobby DIY slash updates, which I hope you all enjoy. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because it really helps me out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. The last time I was in Hobby Lobby, I was so excited to find that they had a sale that was going on pretty much throughout the whole store. All of these cool things marked down to amazing prices. So that's kind of what got this video started. So we also got some of these signs, like seven forty nine, and then got this huge one. It's a really cool sign, and it's only twelve forty nine. I mean, that free one. We've also got like that sign. cute dream catcher sign. That sign in there. So we've got six twenty four two. That's four ninety nine. I mean, like this stuff you can DIY with too. You don't believe it how it is. So to start out with my first Hobby Lobby update slash DIY, I'm going to be using this um, flower or whatever you want to call it. And I really liked the inside or the middle of this flower piece, but I didn't like the black. So I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go ahead and take off that like wicker um, mini flower and it just tied on the back. So it was actually really easy to go ahead and just untie them all. And then I'm going to go ahead and take it outside and give it a couple of coats on the front and the back with some gold spray paint, which I think I got from Home Depot. After spray painting this um, flower, all I had to do was go ahead and reattach my um, wicker flower that goes in the middle. And to do this, I put it where I wanted it and then flipped it to the back. And all I did was go ahead and um, tie those wicker pieces back on. And then I did use a little bit of hot glue, kind of where those cross pieces are on the metal, just to make sure that it stayed nice and secure and that it wouldn't start falling off. And this is how it looks when it's all done. I think it looks super cute and kind of boho with the natural colors and the gold. And it was a really quick and easy update to do and I really like it. So for the second Hobby Lobby update, I'm not using this wall art piece. I think it was about $3.49. So a really good deal and I especially like the frame. I wasn't such a big fan of the actual um, inset or you know what was <laughs> attached to the frame. So the first thing I had to go ahead and do was remove those cardboard protector pieces because I knew I wanted the, um, the frame to be separate from the actual art inside of it. So after removing the cardboard, I'm just going to go ahead and flip it to the back. And I was trying to pop out the actual um, art piece in the middle, but it wasn't coming out. So I went ahead and flipped it to the back, removed the paper. That was really easy to do. And then all I had to do was remove the nails. And to do that, I 
use a actually a paint can opener to kind of pry up the heads of those nails because they're really nailed into the frame and then I just use some pliers to pull them out and then there are also some staples but again those are, those are really easy to pull out and then all I had to do was go ahead and pop pop out my art piece from the middle of my frame and I went ahead and after doing that made sure to clean up the back of my frame so removing all the excess paper and any staples that were left in there. And then once I had everything removed and cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and take my wall art piece and give it a couple of coats of Waverly White chalk paint just using a foam brush. And you can get chalk paint from Walmart or this Waverly White chalk paint. And it did take a couple of coats just because I wanna make sure that I had a nice thick coverage and I couldn't see any of that color coming from the back. And once my piece I had plenty of time to dry, I'm just going to go ahead and reattach it to my frame. And I'm just doing this using some hot glue on the edges and the corners just to make sure that it's nice and secure. To decorate this wall art piece, I'm going to be using some of these really pretty like rose gold glittery picks. And I got these um, around Christmas time at Dollar Tree, but you could substitute with any pick or any other like, 3D piece that you want. And I kind of arranged these how I wanted them, and then I'll just be using some hot glue to attach them to the back of my frame. Next up, I'll be using some of these glitter um, rose gold berries, also from Dollar Tree around Christmas time. But again, you could substitute with anything you wanted. You could also put like some little bows or some ribbon down there. But I'm just gluing some of these little um, balls to the bottom of my picks where they are hot glued to the back of my frame just to cover up the hot glue and just add a little bit of a decorative touch. And this is how it looks when it's all done. I've got all the berries glued on in the right places. And then this is how it looks when it's all done. I really like it. I especially like how I left some of the glitter on the back. And this is how it looks sad on my shelf and I absolutely love it. And for the third and final DIY slash update, this one was super easy. I have this really pretty um, substantial frame. It was actually really big. I think it was around 624, so a really good deal. And I went ahead and I flipped it to the back and I started um, basically detaching it. I removed the paper, the staples, nails, and then they had this foam piece. And I don't know why this was um, 
kind of hard to um, deconstruct, I guess you could say. It wasn't like a regular frame, but once I got everything out, I went ahead and did clean up the back um, using my pliers to pull out the excess staples and then get off all of that paper that was showing around the edges. So the next step was to work on the artwork. I really didn't like the um, piece of art that was in there in my frame. If you like it, go ahead and you know, leave it in there. Do any other type of artwork that you want. This is just an idea. This is just what I did. And this does not look like professional by any means. But I went ahead and used that ruler to go ahead and measure the inside or the um, what the artwork, how big it was inside my frame. And measuring out on a piece of white cardstock, I cut it out using some scissors. And this is really easy to do. You don't want to use um, something like copy paper though, because with what I'm doing, there's going to be some saturation, and I really don't want it to swell or ripple. So I'm going to be using this car sock. You can also use something like something cardboard or anything like that. So next up, I'm going to be using some of these Dollar Tree sponges and after opening them up and removing the packaging, I'm going to use this, actually it's the lid to a candle or whatever you want to call it. And I put it on, I want to make like a half moon shape. So I put it on so that approximately half of my circle was on my sponge. Then I used a Sharpie to trace it out and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm going to repeat this with all three of my sponges. So now it's time to go ahead and make my colors. You can use any colors that you like. I didn't have any paint that um, I felt like was kind of going with those pinkish, coralish, orange, reddish, whatever you want to call them. Kind of boho colors I've been seeing. And this is definitely my take on it. It's not, you know, like Pinterest perfect or exactly, I guess, maybe what boho is supposed to be. But this is what I like. And so I'm taking some bathroom cups. I'm going to be using some um, just apple barrel, two fluid ounce acrylic paint bottles. And I'm going to be using these colors to mix them. I've got Tuscan Red, Snow White, Jackal Lantern, Pink Eraser, and then I've also got some Flamenco Red. I think that's how you pronounce it. And then I also use some Ballet Slipper um, Pink Chalk Paint to use as a bit of a lightener and a little bit of a, a little bit pink tinge, I guess you could say. So I'm just mixing these in bathroom cups again and you know, go ahead and do whatever colors you like. I just had fun mixing them up. And I went for three different shades. So I wanted a lighter, a darker, and a medium. And then once I have all three of my shades, how I like them, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the sponge part. And then once um, I had my colors mixed, I went ahead and put my sponges. I tried to space them evenly out. And then I, this is a kind of messy business, mixing the colors and then putting the paint on the sponges. So you may want to wear gloves because my hands are like covered in paint by, by the time I was done with this. But using a sponge brush, 
I'm gonna go ahead and apply the paint. You want this to the sponge to be pretty much soaked or you know, very saturated with paint. So I'm using pretty much the whole um, cup that I mixed on this. So you, when you mix your paint, just know that you want enough to cover your sponge. And then once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and then I'm gonna try to do my best to apply even pressure all over the sponge down onto my cardstock. And you're gonna repeat this with all three sponges. I try to do light, medium, and dark for the colors, light on top, dark on the bottom. And then that was it for this piece of artwork. And then when I was doing the sponge painting, I did get a little bit of paint on the surrounding cardstock, I guess you could say. So I just went ahead and used my sponge brush to add a little more in to make it look a little more, I guess, intentional. But again, this is really just a homemade piece of art, nothing, you know, professional or anything like that. And then once my paint had dried on my artwork piece, I did go ahead and put it under a stack of heavy books just to make sure it dried nice and flat. And then after letting it completely dry under pressure, I'm going to go ahead and replace it back into my mat or my frame. I'm just doing this using some of Dollar Tree's um, double-sided tape, the Jot brand. And then once I have it put back in, it was time to put everything back into my frame. And you could totally go ahead and uh, put some brown paper back onto the back of my frame, of the frame, just to make sure to finish it off, give it more of that finished look. I actually went ahead and put the brown paper I had taken off in the beginning back on my frame, gluing it. And then, but before I did that, I actually um, used some hot glue on the foam to make sure that it was nice and securely attached to my actual frame and make sure that I wasn't coming off. So again, just kind of wedging my tip of the hot glue gun into the crack, making sure that there is a good amount of hot glue in there just to make sure it stays nice and secure. Then I put my um, original brown paper that was on there in the beginning back onto the back of it to give it more of that finished look. And then I'm going to go ahead and use some glass or window cleaner on the front just to clean it up. Then I went ahead and laid the original piece of brown paper, craft paper, onto the back and tacked it in place with some hot glue. And this is how it looks when it's all done. I again have it on my other shelf. I'll probably hang it up for a more permanent place, but I think it looks so cute and so pretty. Alright guys, that's it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.